the second most anti-gun U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals in the nation has just revived a lawsuit by Mexico looking to sue gun manufacturers out of business. Yeah, yeah, this is amazing. Uh, before I jump into it, I want to thank a quick quick sponsor who's made a lot of this possible for me being able to get out here to, to Vegas to do a little bit of business, uh, and that's Lear Capital. Guys and gals, if you are retiring, about to retire, uh, or if you are watching your 401k or your IRA drop drastically under the current administration and watching inflation destroy your investments, or if you're interested in just buying gold or silver, something that is tangible, uh, check out Lear Capital. Uh, they uh, will answer all your questions. Every question you're thinking about right now about why would I buy gold or why would I trust this company, uh, call them. Our values are aligned. Uh, you can reach out to them at leargg.com or you can call the 1-800 number here on the screen. I almost dropped my pen. Uh, it's 1-800-260-5075 and uh, they will answer your questions. leargg.com, link is down below, phone number is down below. Thank you all for your assistance. All right, let's get into this crazy, crazy lawsuit. Oop. Ah, uh, bumped my coffee and almost spilled it all. So we're going to keep it over here now. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, I've talked to you numerous times about this lawsuit where Mexico was trying to sue several gun manufacturers because they were um, willfully and maliciously uh, in, exporting slash importing guns into Mexico, which are leading to deaths, and Mexico has to has to sue to stop these companies. And it's interesting. I will say that the one company that they didn't name in this is the one company they have a military contract in uh, with, and that's uh, that's Sig. Uh, here's the front page of the lawsuit, and it's Mexico versus Smith and Wesson, Barrett Firearms, Beretta USA, Glock, Ruger. Interstate Arms, Century Arms, Beretta Holdings, Glock Holdings, and Colt. See, no SIG, because they don't want to upset their their supplier of their military firearms. Now, I'm not going to get too far into this. This is a 60-page decision that I woke up this morning to read before I came on, and uh, it, it's it's uh it's bullshit but i think we all need to pay attention to this because what these anti-gun judges are looking to utilize this case to do is to go around and destroy the plcaa which is the protection of lawful commerce and arms act that is the law that passed was passed by congress that protects gun manufacturers this is the one you hear uh, biden saying all the time we need to remove the protection uh for for gun owners so the for gun manufacturers so they can be sued you know nobody can sue them it's actually Horseshit. Uh, they actually can get sued if, if they sell something that is uh, defective and can cause injuries as a result of that. Uh, for an example, the SIG 320 issue, you see lawsuits pop up all over the country for that. Uh, but what the PLCAA does is it protects manufacturers from frivolous lawsuits when criminals use products and do criminal things and cause harm to people. The gun didn't do it. You can't sue Glock, Smith & Wesson, Ruger, Century Arms, because uh, a gangbanger killed somebody or uh, a coward uh, murdered some people and stuff like that, right? We understand that, that's like common sense. However, the attack on our rights is not common sense, y'all. Now, I think you'll, you'll enjoy this little bit here because this will make you laugh. Uh, this is the circuit judge, uh, Kayada, who penned this decision says the government of Mexico brings this lawsuit against seven U.S. gun manufacturers and one distributor. The district court dismissed Mexico's complaint because it concluded that Mexico's common law claims were barred by the Protection of Lawful Commerce and Arms Act. That act prohibits the bringing of certain types of lawsuits against manufacturers and sellers of firearms in federal and state courts. We agree that the PLCAA's limitations on the types of lawsuits that may be maintained in the United States apply to lawsuits initiated by foreign governments for harm suffered outside the United States. However, this is like, I believe in the Second Amendment, but however, we hold that Mexico's complaint plausibly alleges a type of claim that is statutorily exempt from the PLCAA's general prohibition. We therefore reverse the district court's holding that the PLCAA bars Mexico's common law claims, and we remand for further proceedings. The reasoning follows. 
Then a couple quick blurbs here that'll make you giggle. Mexico has strict gun laws that make it virtually impossible for criminals to obtain firearms legally sourced in the country. <laughs> it has one gun store in the entire nation and issues fewer than 50 gun permits a year. Despite these strong domestic regulations, Mexico has the third most gun-related deaths in the world. The number of gun-related homicides in Mexico grew from fewer to, than 2,500 in 2003 to approximately 23,000 in 2019. Yeah, see the border area for the wars happening between cartels. The percentage of homicides committed with a gun similarly rose from 15% in 97 to 69% in 2021. Now, ignoring the war between the, uh, the, the factions that are at the border trying to run guns and drugs, those cartels, will ignore they even exist. They continue and say the increase in gun violence in Mexico correlates with the increase of gun production in the United States, beginning with the end of the United States assault weapon ban in 2004. You see what they're trying to do? Well, there's more on here. Uh, Mexico alleges that the costs have risen for uh, medical and mental health, as well as other services for families of, of the victims uh, and increased costs of law enforcement and stuff like that. And that's, of course, the fault of gun manufacturers in the United States. Not the fact that they're inept or in, incapable of uh, stopping the war uh, between the cartels uh, or that uh, the some of the federales uh, have been known to take things into their own hands. Uh, we'll ignore all that. You know, we'll ignore the lawlessness that is taking place in Mexico because, you know, the truth of the matter is it's you know it's Smith and Wesson, it's Ruger, it's Interstate Arms, uh, it, it's it's everybody except for the manufacturer that you know we're doing business with. It stinks, right? Uh, however, <laughs> what else stinks is the First Circuit and. This lawsuit was written in a specific way to try to pierce the bubble of the Protection of Lawful Commerce and Arms Act. So I just wanted you to be aware that it is uh, it's something we need to watch if they're going to allow other countries to try to sue gun manufacturers out of business. <laughs> well, then they realize they're losing the war at home and they're going to take it to us from abroad uh, but we'll be there every step of the way and they're not taking over you know for those who watch these videos uh, they are not taking over I appreciate each and every single one of you have a phenomenal day uh, for those looking for shot show updates range day yesterday was cold and wet and there were a cool few things some cool uh, some Glock slides from Franklin Armory that turned the gun into a uh, a binary a trigger firearm and uh, got to play with the 40 cal yesterday uh, that was cool they also had a new uh, AR-15 uh, upper which is piston gun and there's no springs in it and it also doesn't have to be uh, regulated as far as the gas system goes when you throw on a can you shoot regular throw a can on shoot regular no adjustments needed that's pretty cool uh, in the staccato, my new favorite uh, manufacturer of toys, <laughs> uh, they came out with a brand new C uh, with a full-size grip and a, uh, a smaller compact grip. Amazing. Built, they kind of brought everything that they brought from the, the CS over to this new C model. And uh, they came out with ammunition yesterday, too, that they make in-house. So... Getting ready to head down to the show floor. I've got some uh, business to do and uh, I will be back with you. I just wanted you to be aware of what was going on. Appreciate y'all. Please guys and gals, if you watch my videos, please subscribe to the channel. There are tens of thousands of you that watch every day that are not subscribed. And that is significant in the world of analytics. Uh, and it, if you could just do me a solid and push that button, the subscribe button, it doesn't do anything to you. Uh, but what it does is it drastically helps this channel get stuff through the algorithm so that more people can understand what's going on in the Second Amendment. Uh, and I thank you for your consideration. Until we see each other again, be safe, stay vigilant, carry a gun to keep you, your friends, your family, your community safe. I'll see you all in the next one. Take care.